Howdy, creator! Welcome back to part two of building your own triad infiltration experience. Make sure to finish part one before watching this video, or you might be a little confused. Part one covered asymmetrically balancing teams, and with that done, you can focus on the gameplay side of the experience. Okay, are you ready for more code? Picking up right where you left off, you need a new verse device that handles making infiltrators invisible. Infiltrators should be invisible until they take damage, at which time they should start flickering for a bit to make them easier to track. The code will also give you the option to flicker all infiltrators when one takes damage or just the damaged player. To do this, make a new verse device called Invisibility Manager. You'll need to add the character's path at the top. For your Invisibility Manager, you'll need an editable array of player spawners and editable floats, vulnerable seconds, and flicker rate seconds. While an int refers to an integer, floats let you use decimals for finer control over things when needed. You will also need an editable logic field called Is Visibility Shared. This is the setting that, when true, will make the flickering occur for all infiltrators. Finally, you'll need an array of all teams in the game and a variable map, Player Visibility Seconds. Not much happens in the onBegin method. You want to wait to make infiltrators invisible until after teams have been balanced, which happens in the Triad Infiltration game device. So you'll actually call the Invisibility Manager to work from the Triad Infiltration device later on. For now, to make players invisible, add the function onPlayerSpawn. If the player is on the infiltrator's team, make them invisible by calling the hide method. To subscribe on player spawn to the spawn pads, create a new method, start invisibility manager. This needs the specifier public because your triad infiltration game device needs to be able to call it. In the triad infiltration game script, add an editable reference to the invisibility manager. Then, in the onBegin method of the triad infiltration game device, call start invisibility manager and pass it an array of the teams and players in the game and the infiltrator's team variable. Make sure to build your verse code and assign the invisibility manager device to the triad infiltration game device. Also assign the infiltrator's spawn pads to the player spawner's array. Back in the start invisibility manager method of the invisibility manager script, get all the teams, then subscribe on player spawn to the infiltrator's spawn pads you just assigned. Then for each player, if they are an infiltrator, create an entry in your player visibility seconds map and set their keys value to zero. Then you'll make your player invisible. To handle flickering players, add a new function called Flicker Character that takes a fort character. Because players will be flickering over time, you need to add the Suspend specifier to make the function asynchronous, which lets it run parallel to other code. In the function, you need a loop that will hide the infiltrator. Wait the amount of time they should stay hidden, turn the infiltrator visible, wait the amount of time they should remain visible, and repeat. This causes the flickering effect of visibility meant to allow players to track them. As it is right now, this loop will run forever, which means the infiltrator will flicker for the rest of the game. To return their invisibility, every loop decrease the time the character has left to flicker. And when that time remaining hits zero, hide the character and break out of the loop. Now, create a new function called isFlickering that takes an agent as an argument and returns true if they are flickering. You will need the decide specifier to make it failable, which requires that the transact specifier also be there. Is flickering is important, because an infiltrator who is already flickering shouldn't have another instance of flicker character called. Having hundreds of flicker character functions called on the same player will cause problems fast. Instead, if a player is flickering, you should reset the amount of time they have left to flicker when they take damage. So create a function start or reset flickering that takes an agent and determines if flicker character is needed or not. First, check if the infiltrator is not flickering. If that's true, call flicker character on them. If they already are flickering, simply reset their flicker timer back to vulnerable seconds. Lastly, to actually know when an infiltrator takes damage, add a new function called onInfiltratorDamaged that has the suspense specifier to allow it to run asynchronously. When an infiltrator takes damage, if visibility is shared, all the infiltrators should flicker. So, call start or reset flickering for each player on the infiltrator team. If visibility is not shared, only the player damage will have start or reset flickering called. At the end of the loop, call the await function on the character's damaged event. This causes the loop to only iterate when a player is actually damaged. Back in the start invisibility manager function, before you hide the player's character, spawn on infiltrator damaged. The spawn expression will start with the asynchronous on infiltrator damaged function when the invisibility manager is first called to action on all the infiltrators. This way, every infiltrator has a guardian watching over them, and whenever they take damage, that guardian gets angry and makes them flicker to remind them to be more sneaky. Save, then build your verse code and run a playtest. Feel free to invite some friends to test with you or set yourself to be an infiltrator by setting that team to have more players than the rest, and hit yourself with some dynamite to make sure everything works. Speaking of playing with friends, what happens if a friend joins the game after everything starts? Well, in part one, you already handled that, but if they happen to be placed on the infiltrator's team, they'll probably be unstoppable. 
that's because you need to let the Guardian know to start watching over them so they can flicker properly. Add a new function called UnInfiltrator joined in the Invisibility Manager with a public specifier. This function has an agent as an argument and spawns the UnInfiltrator damaged function for that agent. In your Triad Infiltration script, find the onPlayerAdded function you made in Part 1. Then, at the bottom, if the player is an infiltrator, call the Invisibility Manager's onInfiltrator joined function. If you build your verse code, invisibility should now work perfectly. To make things a little more interesting, create one last verse device that handles map markers for the objective, and creates a prop that smoothly follows the player holding the objective so the defenders know who's stolen it. Create a new verse device called Item Capture Manager and add the spatial math and characters paths at the top. Add a field for the Capture Item Spawner, Capture Item Indicator, Map Indicator, and Score Manager device. You'll also need the floats, update rate seconds, vertical offset, and return time. Add a new method, follow character, that takes a fourth character as an agent and has the suspend specifier to run asynchronously. You're now going to use something called a race expression. Race expressions let you run different asynchronous expressions at the same time, all of them competing in a race. The contestants for this race are the objective being dropped, the objective being captured, and the loop that controls the movement of the objective and map indicator. This loop will never be able to win the race because it doesn't have a finish line. The dropped or capture event finish lines are the events actually happening. That's what the await means. You're waiting for the event to happen. If it does, that event wins and the race ends. But you aren't waiting for anything with the loop. Instead, it's here so that during the race, the indicators properly follow the objective around the map. When the race ends, the indicator shouldn't follow the objective anymore, since it's either been dropped or captured, so the race ending is how the loop is broken. Now you'll need to handle when a player first gets the objective. Create a new method, on item picked up, that takes an agent as an argument. When the objective is taken, spawn an instance of follow character on the player that grabbed the objective. Create the method, on item drop, that calls a new function, wait for return, when the item is dropped for longer than the return time. Create Wait for Return, which has the Suspend specifier and waits the return time for the objective. If the return time has elapsed, then it calls the Return Indicators function to hide the indicators. If the item is picked up before time runs out, it does nothing. Create the method Return Indicators and simply spawn the indicators way below their respective spawner. Then create the function on item captured that calls the score manager to give the capturing team a point and returns the indicators to the proper position. And finally, in On Begin, subscribe to the different events, get the initial location of the item spawner, and move the indicators below the map where no one will see them. Go ahead and build your verse code, and then place down two item capture managers, one for the attackers and one for the infiltrators. Assign the proper item spawners and score manager devices, then for the attackers, set the return time to 10 seconds. Place down two map indicators and change the icons to your liking. You also need to place down an indicator for each objective. This is the prop that will float above the player's head when they have the objective. Assign the map and item indicators to the proper devices, and you're done! That was a lot of verse, but with all that finished, the game is now perfectly playable. You can find the finished device scripts in the description of the video to ensure you've set things up correctly. There is an issue, though. New players would find it confusing to be thrown into the game without any guidance. There are many ways to communicate the mechanics of the game to your players. This Western Town has an opening cinematic for each team that shows off the map and describes how to play. The setup for this involves a cinematic sequence device for each team, and playing that device whenever a player gets teleported to their base, which only happens at the start of a game. For good measure, there are also billboards that describe each team's goal in their base. Tons of HUD message devices are also utilized. Whenever an objective is grabbed, dropped, or captured, a message plays for everyone in the game to let them know what's going on. This is done by binding the HUD message device's show function to the relevant capture item spawners event based on the message. Speaking of HUD, it's also nice to have a score for each team at the top, as well as a game timer players can easily see. There's a lot more to think about, but that's specific to each map and creator, so think about how you want to communicate with your players. And think about how great you did! You made a Triad Infiltration game! Be sure to check out the Triad Infiltration template, and if this tutorial looks fun, you can follow the island code and play it. And if you're itching to create a different experience, you can keep that creativity going by using the fundamental verse concepts you just learned to build your own experience in UEFN. So until next time, keep creating!